Well, good day, everybody. Welcome to the Lifetime Talks Training Podcast. And today is a message that you're going to make sure you want to hear. We've got Mr. Brian Bradley, who's been with the Agoski Group for, God, 20 plus years. But more importantly, this guy has worked with anybody and everybody. I got my first dose of Brian specifically at a Tony Robbins virtual uh, UPW event. And it, he just helped me tremendously. And I, I just can't thank you enough for coming on and, and sharing with the audience what you're going to share. Well, listen, thank you so much. It's a uh, it's always odd, you know, um, especially since COVID, I've probably done, you know, maybe 125 to 150 podcasts and webinars and all that. And it's always I never get used to people going, yeah, well, thank you. And the thank yous are fine, except you should thank yourself because you did the work and all that kind of, you know, that we all tell our clients that too within the business. You know, if you're if you're successful as a client with your getting in shape or living pain-free or losing weight or doing, don't thank your trainer, thank yourself. You know, you you had to commit to seeing the trainer or doing whatever you're going to do. So it's always a little odd to hear the thank yous, but you're welcome. The uh, The whole event during COVID, you know, doing all the online stuff gave me, a massive audience, you know, we had, we ended up with over probably close to three and a half million people that we were, with if we had to do everything. That was fantastic. It, it was great. I mean, you know, so many people probably who would never be able to go to those events were able to go and do it and, you know, in the luxury of their, their living room. So it was great. Well, you know, the, the audience that we have here is a, a mixture of general population and trainers. And one of the things I'd love for you to discuss is, you know, so many people don't think you can make a living in this industry. And obviously th th that's a, that's a false. And I'd love for you to share kind of the moments throughout your career that, that brought you to, you know, where you are today. Yeah. Great. Um, I was your typical cause I'm in my mid fifties now. So go back to, uh, the mid eighties, you know, when white snake, Bon Jovi, <laughs> that, you know, all those things. Pat I, I was awesome. just watching an amazing interview on, it was, uh, it was on one of the channels, but it was, this is pop. And it started talking about how, you know, th this transition to hair bands is such a great, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and, then, and then Kurt Cobain came and basically yep. crushed all the hair bands and now they're back. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> they're all touring again, you know? So, well, having said that, I would, you know, I graduated, you know, high school in the mid eighties, went to the, you know, college and all that stuff and thinking, okay, when I get out of college, I'm going to crush it because I know what I'm talking about. I mean, I know. Meanwhile, you should be saying you're a moron. You don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, is really what we should be telling ourselves because back then I didn't have really an ear for listening mm -hmm. and anybody listening out there who wants to get into this business or is currently in the business and you're struggling a little bit or this is something you may not know that you don't know. It's just shut up and listen. You know, and I know I'll be talking a lot on here because that's what I like to do. Apparently, I must love the sound of my own voice, but um, you need to cut me whenever you can. It's a, I call it active listening. And when you do that, you really find out what the customer's needs are. You find out what your partner's needs are. You find out what your kids' needs are. You find out what your business partner's needs are. But you got to be willing to zip it or at least ask better questions. And when I started doing that, I realized when I ran into Pete Igoscu, you know, there's the name up there, yeah. Igoscu Method. It's 30 years this year. I I got lucky, you know, in the sense of, okay, the universe delivered because I was looking. I call it lucky because if it weren't for one physical therapist I was working with who walked in and said, yeah, I'm not really into this, but you might like it. I'm like, all right, I'll go over, you know, and, oh, he offers dental. Okay, great. I'll take the dental insurance. That's great. Literally why I took the job. But I'm telling you, after 90 days, everything changed. And if you look at where I am now versus then, um, I moved from South Florida, the Palm Beach area, where we opened up a clinic with PGA National and Jack Nicholas. And then the first time that I visited California, now, if you've ever been to the two states, yeah. One, you need three showers a day. And the other one is, wait a second, the sun's out, but why am I not, yeah. uh, I don't need sunscreen. And you really do because it's yeah. so non-humid out here. We just get yeah. burnt left and right. So I was like, I'm heading to California as soon as I can just to see what it's like and then never turn back. And that was the opportunity that put me in front of basically, you know, all the heavy hitters that I've had, you know, from MMA to NFL to Major League Baseball to PGA to the Tony Robbins world, you know, where you're in front of millions of people. Yeah. All of those things, you know, Tony would look at it and say, it's not luck, bro. You know, you, you attracted it because your heart was in the right place. And that's a great psychology for me to take on. But I can tell you if, you, if you really are open to listening and really are open to what the universe is providing for you, 
Remember, it's happening for you, not to you, no matter how shitty it is. Yeah. It, if you could just see the, the silver lining on that part, it could change everything. Wow. And, and that's so powerful. And I know, you, you know, can you explain like when you say that to you versus for you or, or for you versus yeah. to you, evolve on that a little bit so people can understand that because it's so powerful. I'm going to show you a picture of a young girl, scoliosis, who absorbed that line of thinking directly and her before and after pictures because this little girl at, you know, 12, 13 years old, this little girl before we talked to her, um, the world was wow. happening to her. Like, why me? Why me? Why me? Her mom was why her, why her, why her? And internally, the mom was saying, I caused this, I caused this, I caused this. So who's the real victim in that story? The mom. Yeah. Because she's thinking, I must have done something in the nine months that I carried this beautiful little thing. And guys love their children. But women had a nine month head start. <laughs> they it's really true, yeah. love their children. Yeah. You really never hear of Papa Bear killing somebody who infringed upon the cubs. It's always Mother Bear, you got in the way. <laughs> oh, you were within a half mile radius and she destroys the world in between. Yeah. So here's this little girl in the white, same girl two weeks later, who after our discussions on the psychological end said, I get it. This is an opportunity. I'll be the only 12, 13, 14 year old taking care of myself because scoliosis is a gift. Man. So is it happening to you or is it happening for you? And it's, it's any situation. I mean, I know it's tough when you're in it, mm -hmm. cancer. I know it's tough when you're in it. COVID-19, that was majorly tough when we were in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went right into, okay, here we go. Um, we've got to get to a point where I'm so visible that the company, no matter what happens, the company is going to survive. And we were already doing enough Zoom and all that stuff yeah. with our customers from out, you know, we have clinics in 30 places, 34 places, but that's not enough around the world. So it allowed us to, okay, if it's happening for me, what do we do? Let's just get there. Let's do everything. Let's say yes to it all, blah, blah, blah. Let's just provide. And when you provided, um, there's a saying, people will not spend their money these days. They're very skeptical about where everything's going, but they will spend their trust income. When they trust where it's going and they trust who they're giving it to, oh, they'll give it to you. They'll that's give powerful. it to you. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's, you know, we're both in a business of, um, you know, mine's chronic pain and performance issues, but in the fitness industry, I mean, I know the two gyms that I was going to out here, they were both closed for a long time. And one of them was Equinox. Mm -hmm. you know, and you think to yourself, okay, yeah, they're a high end gym. I mean, they're, they're not lifetime, but they're doing okay. Um, you know, so it's, thanks, thanks for that plug. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're like yeah. tier three and a half. You guys yeah. are like tier seven out of six. So let's just be honest. Yep. And, uh, but ideally it's, it's one of those things where you look at it and say, um, the, the 24 hour super sport closed, mm -hmm. you know, all these places, because were there underlying conditions, you know, what, what could we do to pivot? What could we do to, you know, and, and, you know, looking at and having a group of people surrounded, um, whether your employees or whether they're, they're patrons of yours, you know, they trust you guys. So, you know, you and I have talked before about where mm -hmm. lifetime is and how they're doing and they're doing really well because people like me would say, I'm going to be a member there because, and I'm willing to support you. Yeah. Like I did it with six flags, magic mountain. We just went up three days ago to ride roller coasters with my kids and his cousins. They are the best two there, man. I'm oh, telling you. <laughs> we got we got 15 done in one day. That so, boy. so um, you know, you look at that and you just say, Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay you all through COVID because I trust that you'll be back open and I really want to support you to keep the business going. Yeah. Well, and, you know, adjusting, I think, you know, you mentioned pivoting or or whatnot and in you know, the people that you're around, obviously, I mean, you do that, but the people you're around just are constantly innovating and constantly doing that. And and obviously, you know, from the state, the statement that you said, is it happening for you or to you is what allows you to do that. And there's so many people that just get caught in that mental trap of just running this. Oh my God, why is this happening to me all the time? And then more stuff continues to happen to you and you're not seeing, you know, the good that comes out of it, you know, well, you know, is there any other lessons because, I, you know, that, that you've learned, you know, throughout your time that you can give, you know, and, and it's it's the trainer and, and it's the, the normal person because like what you were saying there is so powerful is, 
you know, when people, you know, whether they gain the weight during COVID or they, they get COVID or they get cancer or whatever the, the thing is, you know, what are the, some of the tools that you've learned to be able to kind of help yourself think that way? Well, I can tell you this, you're looking at a 53 year old male who learned how to read at the age of 49. Now, having said that, meaning read and understand, yeah. not read and take a test. Mm -hmm. And I did my job, I read it, you know, my, my chemistry books and biochemistries and organic chemistries in college, I highlighted everything, you know, the, whoever bought my book after just said, <laughs> Everywhere. Everything's on the test. <laughs> Everything must have been important. Right? So yeah. Hopefully they just burnt that book because I would have confused some people. But yeah. um, listen, number one, and, and I'm a huge fan of Bulletproof Coffee. Yep, so the reason I am because uh, literally I learned how to read at the age of 49 when one of my friends said, shut up, I'm going to just send you everything. I'm like, I don't drink coffee, bro. I love the smell of it. Yeah. But I went from reading maybe 10 books in my whole life and understanding them. I mean, I probably read more because I had to study yeah. and do all that stuff through school. But to really understand something, to absorb it, to remember it, I needed fat. You know, I was I was saying, well, keep your fat low, and then secretly saying, well, I guess this sugar's not going to hurt me. Which then it was really hurting you. So, you know, I will tell you, number one, look into Bulletproof Coffee. Those yep. of you, I'll, I'll make sure you have my contact information yep. from Instagram to Facebook to email. If you have questions about it, I'll give you some recipes to do with it to make it palatable, yep. or at least. You, know, you may not be full keto at that point, which I'm not, um, but I will tell you that's number one. So in speaking of books, Tom Brady would remind you to read that one, The Four Agreements, mm -hmm. Game Changer, probably the best book on the planet, Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl. And then this one, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, amazing. And then this one, if you're in the business and thinking yeah. about, because a lot of people will never make the income or the future of wealth that they want to because they, they don't actually believe they're worthy of it. So interesting. remember they fail because of the inner belief of, well, I was always told that, you know, I, I'm not going to amount to much. And that, that sits in their subconscious. Um, this is an amazing book, an old one, mm -hmm. but a very good one. And it take the word grow rich out of it. It's not like about money. It's, mm -hmm. it's literally grow rich out of it and, you know, be open to things. And then things just happen. Yeah. Like, I'm not kidding. Like it's a, uh, you know, Conor McGregor, you know, I've worked with him before the, uh, after the Khabib fight, before the Cowboy fight. Um, I've worked with, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of NFL players who careers went into 10 and 15 years, one of them for 20. Um, you know, you look at that kind of stuff. But the reason why I get them is because they're at their wits end. Um, and then they start thinking, well, maybe there's something I can do about it. Instead of going, you're the expert, help me. If somebody walks into me and says, Gee, Brian, I hope you can help me. And I said, well, I do too, because there's a huge hole in hope. <laughs> uh, I'm not a big fan of that word. By the time we're done, you're going to believe it like that little girl with scoliosis. Yeah. So at the end of that, it was really cool. I said to the little girl, I said, well, now I need your help. Well, why? What can I help you with? This was like, she's excited now. Yeah. I said, well, there's two things. The first one is when you get old enough that you want to start looking into careers, imagine how amazing it would be if you went in and helped others with scoliosis if you were a doctor, blah, blah, blah. And she yeah. was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I'd love to help people. Don't know what she did. Yeah. But I need you to help me with your mother. Because believe it or not, your mom's really the victim in this room right now. She believes that she gave you the death sentence of scoliosis. And she looked at her mom. She goes, really, mom? Mom starts crying. And it was a really cool moment between the two of them because the little girl became the leader, you know, to help the adult out. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it was a, but it's a narrative that we create in our own self-limiting belief where we're just going, I guess it's, you know, why to get cancer? I guess it's, you know, yes, it may kill you. Let's just be honest, yeah. but it doesn't have to, you've heard enough success stories. Yeah. I, uh, I've had Byron Katie. Uh, she's, I don't know if you're familiar with Byron, but she's got, you know, the work and you know, those first two questions, is it true? Is it really true? And, and, and it's so powerful. It's the same question, but just really diving into, yeah. is that thought really true? <laughs> Can you and, imagine where the divorce rate would be if we were to just ask those two questions and then yeah. say to yourself this, close your eyes and go back to the first day you met that person. How did you feel? And then you smile. And now opening up your eyes with that smile and look at that same person. You go, at least yeah. if you can say this, if you called them the BITC, right? Men or women, you're at least not angry. You're smiling, going like this. Oh, I'm still yeah. saying it, but it's not as painful. Yeah. 
Yeah, powerful. Well, you know, so a lot of what you talk about is is a bit emotional. And I, I know that there is this, you know, within some of the things that you may do with Agascu and, and then obviously with Tony is, is this emotional healing and then leading to a physical healing or vice versa. And I know you've talked a lot about that. Would you expand on, you know, those types of aspects and how those two things have to be hand in hand? It's not even two things. It's three things. Um, okay. uh, think of a triangle yeah. and you have the mental, the emotional, but the foundation is the physical at the bottom. Without that, you can say, I'm better. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna think different today. But your body's kind of like still in this position of I'm a victim or I'm rotated and I'm skeptical, which we wrote a whole book on it called Pain-Free Living, which is yeah. in the Pain-Free Book series. And we talked about condition two being, how do you protect yourself? Somebody's coming at you, you don't go like this. You normally go like that. So that skepticism shows up as a rotational mechanism. Now imagine them going in for a CrossFit course or they show up at lifetime and they're like, look, I'd like to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And then you say, is it true? Is it really true? You know, like if you really dig deep into this kind of stuff and get them to understand, that's why, you know, there's commercials now for weight loss stuff that's tapping into the psychological and they're going, I understand why I had my eating habits that I did, you know, 85% of success in fitness is what you put in your mouth. But 100% is what you absorb in your ear. Yeah. You know, what are you telling yourself or what are you hearing when somebody says something else? So I purposefully, look, I spell fat differently. I spell it P-H-A-T because it's part of the lymphatic word. So when you look at a picture like this and I talk to this girl and we're, you know, and remember I'm a male. So to talk to a female about weight issues, I'm already treading the, I'm going to punch you in the face. Uh, <laughs> not good. But look at this before and after picture within 90 days. And the gray is before the black is after. Wow. So when you look at that, My discussion with her is I said, did you get thinner? And she's like, well, no, my weight is like this. I just, everything just sits better and feels better. I said, yeah, fat girl. But I said, P-H-A-T, welcome to tapping into your lymphatic system. Because she did it accidentally. She came in for chronic pain and she left with the bonus plan, which is my body started moving. My lymph channels were able to move. And the more we sit during COVID, which is 90% more, we're taking 1,000 steps where we used to take 1,000 or 10,000. Think about that. And a lot of us didn't even take 10,000. We took 1,000, now we're taking 100. Mm -hmm. Then you want to go back to working out and thinking that it's going to be good for you. You better get to this foundation first. You better get Got your it. body into a place where it's ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders, which is across from each other, above each other. And that's Pete Agoski's whole line of thinking going, what do you believe, truly believe, and then what are you willing to do about it? So I heard him say the other day during a talk, a young lady said to him, thank you so much. I feel so much better, blah, 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 blah. And he said, congratulations. What are you gonna do with it? Don't just stop. What are you gonna do with it now? You have a newly aligned body, a newly aligned pain-free life doing the Agoscu exercises that you did at home. Congratulate yourself and now put it to use. Oh, well, I'm gonna start gardening more. I love it. You know, I'm all, I'm all for having a landscaper, like my property and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But I got rid of him because he wasn't real good. <laughs> he was good the first time, probably. <laughs> uh, it's kind of weird. It's, it's, and I felt bad getting rid of him years yeah. ago. Yeah. But then I started doing my own physical labor around my house. And there's something so cathartic about it. You're just like, this is awesome. Yeah. And, you know, digging your own holes and doing that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, I might look like the poor neighbor out there doing it, but I don't care. No. You know, I wash my own cars. And so, so you said a couple things there that I want to kind of transition that is, you know, obviously there's a lot more people that are sitting around in pain, you know, in front of computers and screens and, and doing all that. And you had said, you know, the now things open up and all of a sudden, oh, I'm going back to the gym or I'm going to go do this. And they go from zero to, you know, 2000% right off the bat. 
And so can we use that transition to talk about what the Agoscue method actually is and how this can really be some of the exercises we'll talk about today can help transition and make that a little bit safer and smoother. Look at this guy. He's 58. And you see the tattoo up there? Okay. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm showing you that for a reason because his after picture doesn't even look like him. It looks like his kid. Imagine this guy coming out of COVID rounded upper back. You know, it looks like he overdosed on no acetal. You can see that he has no butt, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll let that one sink in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then, look, here's his picture afterward. Oh man. In 12 minutes of exercise, 38 minutes into an appointment before and after, and thank God he had the tattoo. Wow. So you tell me, what's the benefit of a Goscu coming out of COVID? I'm telling you right now, it's the starting line. It's the lacing up of your shoes. It's, I better put tires on my car before the race. You, you need to get your body as close to this as possible. Not perfect, not, we're not going for perfection. I don't even care. But if it's like brushing and flossing your teeth to make your dentist job easier so they don't have to go in and do root canals and all that stuff, why not brush and floss your teeth? Why not do it to your joints? Why not add a couple exercises that you can easily do at home? And if you want, we'll do a couple on here yep. so that people can actually feel it in a little bit to say, well, this is all great, but I don't really believe you. Well, you're going to believe me after three exercises yeah. when you get up. Yeah, it, it was amazing. Like, again, you know, every day when I did the UPW, you would come out for 15, 20 minutes and take everybody through, you know, uh, several of them. And I, there wasn't a person that was in my room. I had my wife and my, my son that was doing it with me that didn't feel tremendously better, more energetic, ready to go, which is obviously the priming <laughs> why, why he had you in the front. So can you go through just, uh, again, it's obviously about posture, but, you know, explain the importance of that and, and what, you know, somebody rounded in here like this, going out and doing more bench press or doing something, what that can, you know, how that can impact them negatively. Let's just say, um, but you and I've been in the fitness world a long time and wellness and all that stuff. Any trainers on here is the bicep muscle, a posture muscle. Most people would say no. Is it a core strength muscle? No. Okay. Now let's go to anatomy. Yep. The bicep itself attaches through the shoulder to the shoulder blade mm -hmm. to the scapula. Is the scapula closer to the core? Is it closer to yep. a postural bone? Yep. Yes. Well, the rotator cuff attaches there, the trap, the rhomboid, you know, all these things. So now you start thinking, well, wait a minute then. The position of the scapula affects the tension put on the bicep and vice versa. If I do bicep curls correctly, I could be affecting my posture which then allows me to get closer to here to be a hip driven athlete versus a upper body driven athlete. And I'll tell you how everybody can test this. This is very scientific. So are you ready for this? It's going to blow your mind. Okay. Very scientific folks. <laughs> Tonight, when you're on the toilet, I want you to think of me. <laughs> That's well, a great visual to start. Yep. Hold on. Let me get that visual. Okay, good. But when you're done with your business, stand up. And then ask yourself instinctively without changing it on, you know, consciously, what did I use to get up? Did I use my legs or did I push off my seat? Did I push off my legs? Did I grab for something to help me get up? And 90% of the time you're going to use your arms to do it. When you're climbing a stair that has a banister, notice how much you rely on the banister to help pull you up. That's an upper body driven athlete, which sooner or later is going to turn itself into a back problem. So, I, I mentioned the bicep because it's the furthest thing away from the core, you know, the abs, the hips, the back, whatever. But if it's done correctly, a bicep curl, it is an absolute game changer because not only will the bicep train at its normal length now, because if your shoulder is rounded here like this, yep. you're shortening the bicep and you wonder why you do bicep curls and your arms aren't growing. I won't even get into calves. Yep with dudes because thank God for long pants or we'd all have small calves. You know what I mean? So it, it, calf. it, it's so interesting too, with, you know, so many trainers and, and people out there, they, they, they do the movement to do the movement, but they don't think about, you know, or they're just not taught, you know, 
the way we compensate, our body's just an amazing comp compensatory being, and it will always do what you ask it to do with whatever it is that's available. And when you're doing that, you're getting good at the compensation, but you're not actually impacting the muscle the, the way that you want to, you know, when you're doing certain exercises. So then why don't we change the word compensation exactly. to adaptation? Yep. Because compensation could be something's wrong yep. when it's happening for you. <laughs> So it's true. like let's, there it let's, goes. let's take downward dog. And I already yep. had this up here from uh, another event that I was doing for a corporation. Here's both of them are in downward dog. There's the head. I mean, this artwork, if you want me to sign it, I'll sign <laughs> it. And one so, one. Next Picasso. It's original. Yes, of course. <laughs> but if you look at the person in downward dog, they're both doing downward dog, but one is pushing into downward dog. You should never have that face in, in yoga. Right. This one is pulling into downward dog. Teaching that difference and using those words and even changing the inflection in your voice. Can you feel how you're like, can you feel Jason, how you're, how you're pushing into downward dog, like using your arms, listen to my voice. Yeah. I would do it like that. Then I would change it to Jason. What I really want you to do is from right here. I want you to pull into downward dog. Now the inflection in my voice is what neurolinguistic programming is. That's NLP, where you're, the person perceives it differently and th then it gives them permission to change it. Yep. Because if I start out with stop pushing, all you're gonna do is push. push. Like, think about this. I and mean, then this is a Tony Robbins thing. Um, don't picture the purple elephant. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> you just did, yeah. Yeah. right? So it's the same idea. Um, I kill the word push and we're gonna awaken the word pull, you know, and it's like a Star Wars thing. You know what I mean? It's like, yep. you will start to use this. And for those of you who aren't Star Wars fans. Yeah, it's um, a Jedi ahead. mind trick. <laughs> go ahead and hit delete on this podcast yeah, exactly. right now. So go ahead. No, no, no. And so, it, so the downward dog is definitely one that is kind of a transition that you highly recommend? No. No. Um, okay. It's one that's used very often in yoga. Yep. So it's the easiest one that everybody thinks, well, I can do my downward dog. Yeah, I got yeah. my heels down. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you got your heels down by using your triceps and your shoulders to do it. Good yeah. job. And you wonder why you're coming out going, I did yoga today. Yep. I feel so good. Turn your neck. <laughs> think about, think about how many, how many different podcasts or, or events we can do on just doing exercises correctly. <laughs> it just, it's, it's baffling. But, but you do have a series, you know, I know that, you know, what, what would you recommend for, you know, somebody just transitioning out? If there's one or two that you would say, these are two that will absolutely make a big difference. They're easy to do. Um, you know, what, what would those be? Stuff like that. But if there's one or two things that people can do, there's an exercise called elbow curls. Okay. Where we would basically take the hands and maybe what we'll do is why don't we try something? Are, are you able to stand up where you are? Yep, absolutely. Okay. So why don't we have everybody stand up if they're watching this? Um, if you're driving, don't stand up. That would be a bad thing. <laughs> um, but go home and watch this because you're going to want to do these exercises and the, the feeling. So let me have you just stand there barefoot if you don't mind. I am. For everybody to get their shoes off. Get, get out of the chair built by the lowest bidder. Um, I want you to stand up and close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, where's your body weight? from left to right, which foot do you feel is carrying the most body weight? For me, my left. Okay, how about from front to back in each foot? Where do you feel the weight? Is it even or is one in the heel, one in the ball? Where is it? It's probably more mid, mid foot to ball. I'm On both, feet. is yeah, it even? Both. Yeah. No, I'm swaying back and forth a little bit. <laughs> okay, and for those of you that have your eyes closed, you know, just put that away, like where do you feel it? Okay, great. Now open up your eyes. All we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to test that again. Here's another test you could do. I'm not going to say touch your toes. What I am going to say is just bend over and hang. How far can you go without bending your knees and without fighting and without hurting your back? If you don't want to do this, don't do it. But it's a test for how's my body move over. You know, you'll think flexibility. So just try that once. I'm going to hit my head on my counter. Yeah. Do not hit your head in the counter. Here we go. The speaker has left the building. <laughs> it was pretty okay. good. So where did you get to? I got to the floor. 
Okay. A my lot hands. of people, if I ask them, where did you yeah. get to? Well, I can get my hands to the floor if I bend my knees. And remember, this is no judgment. It's just a fact. It's an objective mm -hmm. measure that we're going to seriously affect and then test that measurement again. And you're going to say, I don't get it. We didn't do anything for my low back hamstring flexibility. What we did do is we applied a stimulus toward this alignment. So now standing there, get your feet fist width apart at your big toes and get your, get your toes slightly five degrees turned in, slightly pigeon toed. Take your hands and open them up like this. Here's a fist with your thumbs out and then open up the fist so your fingernails and palms could be touching like that. Put that against your temples with your thumbs down and close your elbows together 20 times. Just give me 20 of these. Try to touch them behind you also, which that's not going to happen, but <laughs> try to touch them in front of you. And I guarantee you there's people on here listening and trying this that aren't able to touch their elbows. It's okay to start there. Remember, your shoulder blade is now gliding across your rib cage. It's We're amazing. Breaking... Yeah, it's amazing that you're you feeling, or I'm feeling, just some muscles starting to tighten up, just some different things below my oh, shoulder blades. Believe it or not, your abdominal wall is firing yeah. right now. Yeah. That's the key part is that your, your core is responsive to what the shoulder is doing. So if your shoulders are so used to being here, no wonder when you look down and say, I train core every day, but my back hurts. And why do I have all this belly fat? <laughs> I mean, it's, it, you're, you're not untapping anything. Now, um, let's take you through, um, well, let me put, that's one exercise for a second. Just turn your feet back to where they were. So, so just doing that is just, you know, again, make, make the fist, get to the fingers, then come to the temple. And, then and the key is to get your feet straight, slightly toed in, because right now we're waking up this muscle right here called your psoas and your iliacus muscle. And without your leg being straight, if I allowed your feet to do this, you're basically getting a 40% benefit. Got it. Now imagine if you went through life saying, I'd like a 40% benefit. So, so there might be people going, well, wait a minute, you're, I, I'm doing shoulder stuff and it's impacting my hips and my, well, my, here's my hip flexors. Know. Yep. Bend over, touch your toes. What's the difference? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So think about it. You did one thing for your shoulders, 20 reps and what changed? Yep. The, the so, distance in which, yeah. Correct. So they're feeling like their flexibility got better yep. when it's not a matter of stretching flexibility. It's a matter of why are you stretching a muscle every day and expecting it to be loose, but it's not the next day. That's the definition of insanity. Right. So and, let's change the structure, get you to here, get your muscles and start asking, why is the muscle so tight? So was that, would that be something you can do multiple times in the day? You recommend first thing in the morning before you go to bed or what, what recommendations would you have? I think you don't need rules around it. I think yeah. you need to trust your inner self, ask yourself when you want to do them. You'll see in that article, guys, yeah. we have like standing elbow curls, sitting cats and dogs, assisted hip lift, hip crossover, the downward dogs in there, which we already learned, mm -hmm. pull, don't push, but I have it at the end of the menu so you can pull into it a little easier instead of starting out with downward dog. Yep. So, and you just experienced it. Like for example, stand there for one second, Jason, close your eyes. You did one exercise for your shoulders. Where's your body weight left to right? It's pretty even and I'm not swaying anywhere near Correct. what I used to be. Yeah. So yep. if something can happen that quickly, can you imagine when I get my hands on you yep. in person or on Zoom to write you a menu that's specifically designed for you? If I have my way, right? Every single person should get a menu, no matter where they are from Agoscu, at least to get a starting place. That can happen from the pain free book. That can happen from seeing us. We have digital stuff. I'm not trying to promote it from a sales standpoint. It's no. you've got to do something. Yep. It's why the dentist gives you a toothbrush and a little thing of toothpaste. <laughs> Just brush your teeth, right? Yep. So, you know, obviously th there's a lot of people that have pain and, you know, we, we can't treat pain, but there, there's other things mechanically. If we can help people's mechanics, then and the pain goes away, obviously, I think we're, we're okay. But what is some of the biggest things that you've seen from a fallacy around pain, you know, where people they they get the pain they go to the doctor they say we got to cut you <laughs> you know and can you talk about how th this method and, and what you've seen as people that have done the Egoski method you know have not had to go and, and get those surgeries and you know things like that that are, are so powerful because some people just they automatically just go i'm gonna go and have surgery for my back pain 
Look, uh, foot surgeries. Let's talk bunions for a second. Um, a lot to a lot of people, a bunion is like, oh, I just hate it the way it looks, or it's become painful, or I have this neuroma in my leg and or my foot, and I have this uh, nerve that's being impinged, it's killing me, or I wake up in the morning, it feels like I'm walking on glass with plantar fasciitis. But nobody ever asks why. Nobody ever asks why when you go to sleep, are you are you feeling like you have gout in the morning because your feet are killing you because you haven't moved fluid, but yet you're in the most fluid moving state being horizontal when that's just not true. It's the sport of sleeping, the sport of sitting on the toilet, the sport of uh, scoliosis. I mean, I look at everything from a sports standpoint and just say, well, why don't we train for it? The sport of sitting during COVID. It's not going anywhere, guys. We're sitting down to do this podcast, but let's train for sitting to give our body the best chance to recover from it. So in order for people to get the most out of this, and think about it from a, a myth or fallacy around pain, you need to absorb a mentality that that's why we named the book pain free versus uh, love your pain. Okay, great. <laughs> when I'm in that much pain, I don't love yeah. my pain. But if yeah. but you, all of a sudden you said pain free, that gives me a different light going, man, I wish I could do that. Yeah. Well, the yeah. wish is over. Start doing something yourself to assist your physical therapist, to assist your chiropractor, to assist your MD, yeah. because those three people need help. Remember, um, what do you call a medical student who gets uh, C minuses in college? <laughs> Doctor. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you're dealing with hum the human yeah. rates. Like yeah. there's good and bad in every field. And I don't mean like bad as in they hate their job and they hate you. It's yeah. just, they may not be out of the box thinkers. Yep. You know, you might be dealing with somebody who says, uh, um, you know, you're healthy. You don't need this. You have doctors who are saying, don't get the COVID shot. Do get the COVID shot. Who do you listen to? Yep do have back surgery, don't have back surgery. You can clean up your diet, but you'll be back to see me. It's their belief system. Remember, they're telling you what they've experienced, what they believe. What does it mean to you instinctively? So when somebody says pain is bad, I'm telling you pain is not bad. And when you do the exercises from that article or from what we just did, you're gonna get a good idea of whether pain is bad or not. And pain isn't work. Like you'll go, oh, but now my hip is bothering me a little bit. Yeah. Is that pain or is that work? No, it's just tired. Well then differentiate between the two. Yeah. Because some people are afraid to feel and you don't blame them because they've been down that road so long. They're in a hole of so much pain that any type of symptom, you know, like when you work your biceps and it's burning yeah. so bad, yeah. they may view that as noxious and say, I don't like this because it's gonna hurt me yeah. versus, well, it's just muscle breakdown and then muscle healing and then muscle breakdown and muscle. And then ultimately your metabolic rates better and you're, you've now conditioned yourself. So, you know, I, I don't really, I guess I should say there are no fallacies about pain. It's just belief systems that you've been told, which you've absorbed into your belief system. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be able to label it as, okay, here's a perfect one. Uh, no, thank you for the gift. Oh, you're screwed. You have a herniated disc or you're in trouble. You have a degenerative hip. And then you Google it. Oh my gosh. I have spondylolisthesis. I have a degenerative hip. Dr. Google scares the bejesus out of you. Okay, great. <laughs> but you have a choice at that point. Yes, I'm going to give into the rhetoric and it's going to take me down a negative road or no, thank you for the gift, Dr. Google. I'm not going to let you scare me. And if I name it a gift, I'm not going to be scared of it. Yep. And so with with regards to the pain there's also performance in in you know myths around how do i improve performance and i i know you mentioned some of the things you've done you know with all the different athletes connor you know more recently of how did you, how did you by improving posture impact their performance that's the khabib fight in the pink skin because he couldn't breathe but look at his postural position that's for real during the fight too Okay. Yep. The green one was the cowboy fight. I got him 12 days before that fight. He made that postural change and he lost in the third round. I think of the Khabib fight. Khabib was a better ground guy. Yep. I get it. Yep. But Connor had lost it since the first round. Cause he couldn't breathe the, the green shorts. He won in like 42 or 44 seconds. Yep. And he punched the guy with the top of his shoulder in his face and broke his nose because it was like teaching a guy who, who had never been told ground reaction force, how your foot plants into the ground, drives your hip, drives your shoulder but your hip has to create the push down to the ground to create the ground reaction going that direction. Yep. So 
in plain English, your punch should come from your hip. In plain English, pickleball is a hip sport. In plain English, table tennis, you know, the great sport. Your of favorites. <laughs> yep. Uh, let me show you this. Like it's a, um, this is a training that I did the other day. Well, this was a while ago. This is on my Instagram. And so I'm just training and I wrote it up about a hip driven movement to create that spin that I'm putting on the ball. Okay, and when you swipe over, here's the leg movement that goes with it. I'm sorry you have to look at my backside, but <laughs> let's just pretend it's good. And then you see the guy that I'm playing with who I'm, I'm doing a lesson with, he's, now it's his turn to hit to me. And all I'm doing is blocking. I don't have to do much work. He has to do all the work. And then we start talking, are you getting enough hip work in there or it becomes inconsistent. And with a ping pong ball, the thing's so light, if you're inconsistent, it's gone. Well, imagine Tom Brady throwing a ball and he can't get his hip around to do it. There's no velocity on the ball. You know, Patrick Mahomes wrote, a, he has a massive contract behind him because the kid is an athlete. Yes, he's a good quarterback, but the kid can rally psychologically, emotionally, he never gets down. If you notice this last year, go back and look at it. Every time that he was behind in the by halftime mm -hmm. at the at the end of the second half for a second quarter going to the third quarter i said game over he's already down 14 nothing they'll win by 30 and they do because he's a comeback from behind yeah. guy so it's the psychology around it and then can your you know it's like a navy seal thing peter goski used to say this in, in the marine corps where he started in the marines your mind will quit far before your body will ever quit and that's the ringing of the bell at navy seal you know, not that I have experience of it, but yeah. I did watch GI Jane. So you can, <laughs> you can, so you can, you can ring the bell. That that's a metaphor for anything. Yeah. You know, oh, I just had COVID. I'm just done with COVID. Oh my God. Versus, I'm done with COVID too, and I'm ready to go. Versus, yeah. man, that really beat me up. Got it. So all all of this. So would you just do a kind of an overview of what what you what would somebody expect, you know, from a training perspective, if they were to go to, you know, a, a course on a you and, and what do you offer? Is it is it virtual now? Or is it live? Or is it combo of both? Well, let's talk about the the, the, the trainer first. Let's talk about yeah. the fitness professional. Mm -hmm. We have a course called posture alignment specialist, the PAS. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Jason. I would love every single trainer at Lifetime to have their PAS certification. So folks, you and I will work on that after. We'll, we'll yeah. push them pretty hard to get it right. <laughs> um, the reason I say that is that now you have something that's really an amazing quiver of arrows where you can pull them out and say, well, I have this for this. Yeah, but my knee's killing me. No big deal. Today's leg day. We're going to set your body up to do it first because your knee might be hurting you because of another reason. You're not diagnosing, you're not treating. That's not your job. Mm -hmm. Your job is to help the medical professional by getting the person's noxious movement out of their daily lifestyle. You're a movement specialist. As it relates to the customer, we can do anything. You know, um, I can take a look at them on Zoom, my team, you know, anywhere around the world. Um, I'm probably seeing people in a hundred and I've seen people in maybe 150 countries this year yep. because of Zoom. I mean, it's just exploded when we already had a busy Zoom schedule before this. Yep. But now it's given everybody that, you know, what the, the real benefit is I get to Zoom from your house yep. and see you interacting with the equipment in your house, how you're actually doing the exercises. Yep. So even my guys that come in and see me in person in California, Nashville, Florida, Denver, wherever we have, Clint, excuse me, Japan, Mexico, we require them to still do zoom with us so I can see you in your real life. And it's been amazing. Yeah. So ideally, yeah, we'll look at, you know, getting people certified or maybe a couple of your top trainers, you know, something like that is yeah. part of their reward for doing this or they invest in it somehow. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to help people adapt in a better way. So like if it were you and I just having a business talk, I would say, listen, I'm going to help lifetime create a program that's going to give their members the advantage to adapt to a, a new body that will allow them to leave the, what you think is fat F A T 
And we're going to spell it P-H-A-T. Open up your lymphatic system, get it to help you rather than hinder you. And the lymphatic system is, is health. It's not just how do I look. It's overall sewage backup. It's byproducts from workouts. So literally, the more you work out, the fatter you could get. P-H-A-T-T-E-R. Because you're building up so many byproducts, but nobody's cleaned the hair out of the bathtub clog, and you're still adding water to it. That's a moronic behavior. You're going to flood the house. In what ways, and, and you've you've talked about that, and I'd love to just dive into that for a second, is, you know, the lymphatic system being so important. It, what are some ways that, uh, obviously, the exercises will help that, but what are some other things that people can do to help get that fluid moving and, and, and do those, you know, help, you know, rid and so that it's not pooling in bad spots? Yeah, well, I've been in your facilities, and they're amazing, by the way, so Thank you're you. you're welcome. Um, you guys are kicking Thank butt. You. Very good job. Um, you know, but you've also used the Normatec stuff. Yep. You know, Normatech, uh, uh, Speedhound or whatever the people happen to be using, yep. there's a bazillion of them, but Normatech basically runs the gambit of yep. their best stuff. You know, the hips, the shoulder, the legs. Um, you know, you can get those, those, those passive machines to help you move fluid. But again, you're going to wake up the next day if you haven't done something for the rest of the 23 hours sure, left in yep. the day. So that's where normal heel strike to toe off comes in. You'll know this by after this podcast, everybody could walk around barefoot around their house, normal speed, and just feel what your foot strike should be doing. It should be hitting on the center of the heel, the center of the forefoot, and the center of all toes pushing off. You'll notice that you're on the outside and you don't get much toe off. Well, if you don't get much toe off, that means your leg never goes really behind you. So here's an athlete on what I call the make your butt larger machine. <laughs> Every elliptical company is going to kill me for this. Okay. <laughs> but check this out. This is a person on the make your butt larger machine in the maroon shirt. Does the leg ever go behind him? No. And then there's the old Nordic tract in the one. Look how in shape she is. And her leg goes behind her in hip extension. When you lose hip extension, you're in some trouble. Yep. Well, that means if you just line yourself up at the elliptical machines and just go like this. Well, there's Betty, there's Jim, there's Tom, there's Maria, there's all my friends who are clients, and there's Jim's butt, it's larger. There's Betty's butt, it's larger. There's <laughs> it. I mean, listen, I, I, I'm trying to throw some levity to it, but I see it. Mm. And I feel bad for you because, especially females, I am so sick and tired of females being lied to. I grew up with three sisters. Two of them were just out here on vacation, and we had some real discussions about their health and and because they... I guess they look at me for that because um, one's a calculus teacher. The other one works in insurance and I don't know anything about those two. So I'm like, you know, I know just enough to be dangerous, but I will tell you this. Congratulations, Erica, on your 65 pound weight loss. Now, what are you going to do about it? Well, what do you mean? Well, why not go for the other 60? Well, that's going to be hard. Yeah, but what if it wasn't? What if we got you off of a machine that takes your legs and stops here, never brings your leg behind you, and you know what? The world is spinning, by the way, right? The world turns. So it's basically its own treadmill. Get outside and get on the ground and walk the treadmill. Get in grass barefoot. Get on some cobblestone barefoot. Walk in some trails barefoot. Yeah, be careful with your ankles and all that. But just those little strategies of your foot doing this translate into a much different story up above, and it really helps move the system. Got it. Got it. No, I, And I know like things like jumping on a tramp or a mini tramp or cold water do those things also they're again they're complete, they're complete garbage really if you don't do anything else yep look you can get on a mini trampoline and be shaped like this and all you're doing is taking a posture that's like this and now adding a vertical pounding to it yep. you're actually compressing the body into a more cocooned covered position the opposite of this why not do three or four exercises first, then get on that trampoline? It, the trampoline is a metaphor for the doctor. Make the doctor's job easier by doing your part. Make the trampoline's job easier by doing your part. Then all of a sudden, congratulate yourself and say, I did that to me. That's fantastic. Versus the trampoline made me thinner. Don't give that trampoline. It has no feelings. <laughs> it doesn't want credit. Give yeah. yourself the credit. Yeah. That's great. Well, anything else that you would want to share with the audience that, you know, maybe we haven't talked about that's just super important that you feel, you know, uh, needs to be, be heard? 
Um, we covered a lot of the, you know, just the belief system, but I will tell you the movement is the foundational key for that. And it's not just any movement, it's quality of movement. It's sitting is not the new smoking, sitting's not the new cancer. Um, I have some guys in the field who are top in the world in their field. Um, good friends of mine who, who believe that, and they may not really truly believe it, but they may be using it from a marketing standpoint. And I don't blame them because now they can provide some remedies for it. Great. I'm telling you that sitting is a sport trained for it because it's not going anywhere. So why don't we move our bodies into a better alignment, make the chiropractor. So when I go get an adjustment for my friends that are chiros, I do it because I want to, not because I need to. I get a massage because there's nothing like a two hour full body, two hour. One is yeah. just teasing me. Yeah. <laughs> two hours. Come on, where they spend the last 30 minutes on your yeah. feet. Like, yeah. oh my God. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> but isn't it isn't it fun to have a massage when you want to versus I can't move? Yeah. And then you're putting the onus on that massage therapist to fix you when you're broken, when all along you could have prevented it. So you would never race a car that was crooked or was missing a wheel. But yet we race every day throughout our life and we don't have a wheel. Yeah. One of them's not working. The foot's turned out like this. And then you wonder why something like pickleball hurts you. You will not believe the amount of injuries in pickleball. <laughs> but it's because it's the number one growing sport in America. Yeah. And if you're not playing, I suggest you play. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I guess it's almost as good as the great sport of table tennis, but it's on, <laughs> no, but it's, I just happen to be good at both. So you know, the only things I'm good at, but let's talk about a bike one day. Okay. So yeah. this, this bike that I have over here, I don't know if you've ever seen it before. It's called the Carol bike. Okay. It's an eight minute bike ride, eight minutes. You know, it's almost like something about Mary. I can't do anything for eight minutes. What do you mean? A seven minute abs or whatever it is. It turned into six minutes, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. And if you haven't watched that movie in a while, it's so good. Go watch. <laughs> you, need, you need a good chuckle. Yeah. But this bike is a biohacking bike that I got off of Dave Asprey. And, you know, he suggested it. I'm like, okay, great. And I'm all about time. Because yeah. if there's one thing you can't ever get back, it's your time. So what it is, is two minutes of pedaling going, hey, Jason, what's going on? Did you go to church this weekend? Oh yeah, what's going on? Did you go to the beach? Okay, great. And we're pedaling like this. And then it's boom, 10 or 20 seconds of as hard as you can pedal. The book, ha or the bike has an artificial intelligence in it that is now, I trained for six rides. So it learned Brian Bradley's abilities so now it tightens up the wheel on its own and i go for 10 or 20 seconds and by the end of 20 seconds i'm shot but then it's a three minute of the wheel just free spins again there's no tension and we're just relaxing the heart rate goes from 156 146 back down to like 88 and then the second re-hit high intensity interval training yeah, hits yeah. for 10 or 20 seconds and then three minutes of break at the end so it's really like eight minutes and 20 seconds or eight minutes and 40 seconds and the workout's done and i'm not joking you I'm going to start doing some videos in a three piece suit going, I don't normally wear this, but I want to see if I'm really sweating by the time I'm done. And you're not, but because of the hit re hit your metabolic rate and the studies that they have going for this, it's unbelievable. Wow. So and it's actually true hit, <laughs> which that's a whole other topic of conversation. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know enough about that kind yeah. of stuff. I, yeah. uh, it's a, um, but I like the idea that it gave me two intervals. I did it yesterday. Today I'll play, I'll go and play three hours of pickleball sometime today. And you know, the way we play is on the competitive courts. So it's no joke. Like it's not, let's play with our neighbor and it's not, it's friendly, but it's not friendly. Nice. You know, we have two courts that are competitive, four courts that are recreational. I do both. Um, but over here it's, I'm going to snatch the life out of you. I, <laughs> and, it's, and it's usually some 65 year old woman who just crushes me. And I'm like, how did that happen? I'm like what? Yeah. I used to play racquetball all the time and, and you get in there and those guys that know how to play real well, you know, you're running around just ragged running into walls and they're just standing right in the middle and they're just like, eh. <laughs> Listen, I lost my, when I really got into table tennis at the national level, started competing in the U S open and all that stuff. Uh, I thought I found Mecca when I heard in San Diego, there was a table tennis training facility with 25 tables, 50 foot ceilings. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I no longer called it ping pong. I called it table tennis. Then I was really good at ping pong. I wasn't good at table tennis. Cause the guy who beat me was 78 on his birthday that day. And he beat me like 
you know, 11, two, 11, four. And I'm like, how did this happen? I mean, <laughs> have you seen these? Like I should be crushing you. Yeah. He's, and I'm joking with him. He goes, let me see your racket. And he looks at my paddle. He goes, this is a piece of shit. And he sets it down. <laughs> so then you found out there's $300 paddles. Oh, geez. <laughs> and then five years of training with a coach. And then I'm in the nationals, you know, doing that kind oh, of stuff. Nice. And there's always somebody better. Like what you're seeing at the Olympics, they would literally beat me like I was playing blindfolded. They're yeah. that good. Wow. But, it, you know, you don't need to get to that good. Yeah, you just yeah. need to step over into something, but you'll never get any of that. I, I promise you, if you don't get your body as balanced as possible. And I say that because that goes for walking, that goes for running, that goes for, look, I'll let you go with here because I know you're going to you, say, Brian, you know. shut up here pretty soon. But look at this picture that I pulled off television and the guy was talking about health and it's a guy running. He was saying, you need to get out there and run for the health of it. Whoa. I'm sorry, look at that foot. Or you have somebody that says, I'm a world record holder for the plank. We found this guy in Oceanside and no wonder he held it for, what's that say down below, two hours or five hours. Ugh, but look yeah. at that kyphosis in his yeah. mid back. Now on my Instagram, which is the Brian Bradley, I showed you that before. And I yeah. only did the Brian Bradley because Brian Bradley was taken by the Tampa Bay hawker player and he wouldn't sell it to me. So I did the Brian Bradley, I'm not that narcissistic. I do a lot of talks on there in regards to how to do one arm rows correctly. Game changing video on that one. That is an absolute game changer. And, and I'll put this out there that if you guys at Lifetime wanna do some mini videos that I'll come in, we'll go, I'll go down to the center in La Jolla, we'll film some yeah. stuff down there yeah. just to put it out for your members to see what this kind of stuff is. Yeah. Um, there are some things in the gym that Egoscu has that will flat out reinvent the entire weightlifting world. Beautiful. All righty. Well, I, I can't thank you enough, man. It's been great and <laughs> so much, so much good information. And, you know, we'll put in the show notes, you know, where you can get access to, you know, Brian's stuff, his Instagram, uh, obviously the Agoscu method and, you know, we'll work out some things where we can get as many people in there as we can. And in general population, just know that regardless of where you're at, there's a place to start and this stuff, is is simple but not easy i will say and you know just doing it like you like he had said doing it brushing your teeth is is just gonna make you feel that much better so thank you again man <laughs>